Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode I get to help a friend out. That's right, I'm helping one of my close friends who sent me uh, a couple of photos. They were family photos and what she's really looking for is she's not a Photoshop person at all. She's looking for a composite of the best of these two photos of her kids. And when I show you the photos, you'll see what I mean of why we need a composite. But, and by the way, this is not an invitation. Do not send me your photos. I do not have time. But I'm doing a special friend a favor because they needed the help. And when I saw the photos, I knew it wouldn't take me that long. So let's, and by the way, I decided to turn this into a tutorial. So you get to learn how to do it on your own. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at what's wrong with these photos. So I'm here in Photoshop CS5. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up Mini Bridge. I've got both photos here. So I'm going to just select one, hit the space bar so you can see it. Now, in this photo, I love the kids in the front and their smiles. I even love this one, but it's kind of, she's blocking her little sister back there. And also, they're sitting on something that we don't want them to fall into. So mom's laying here on the ground, kind of holding the baby and holding the kids to make sure that they don't fall over. Okay, so mom's being a safety person here, but here's the problem. We don't want mom's feet. And we don't know who this guy is. We don't even want him in there. Now, if we go to the next photo... Great, we got the baby smiling, she's even waving, and we got this weird anomaly over here of something they tried to do when they were working on these photos in iPhoto. So we don't even know what that is, nor do we want it, but the first two kids really are kind of frowning, they're not really smiling anymore, so that's why we need to make a best of both of these photos. So I'm going to select both photos, hit my return key in Photoshop CS5 to open them both up. And now what I like to do is, again, they're in tabs. I'm going to go ahead and put down, I'm going to make this my base photo, and I'm going to put the other photo on top. So using my move tool, I'm just going to go ahead and start dragging the actual image. And then when I drag it up to the other photo and drag it in, Photoshop will, and then I can let go, and Photoshop will just add that as another layer. Now I can go ahead and put them on top of each other, and they will align a little bit, but I want Photoshop to do a better alignment job. So I'm going to just go ahead and select both the original layer, or, or the original background, and the new layer I just dragged over. We'll go to our edit menu, and we'll use my one of my favorite Photoshop features, auto-align layers. And it will auto-align the layers based on the pixel content. So it will kind of try and start to figure out where those images would look best based on the pixel content. And again... They're not, you know, exactly the same location the person moved who took the photo. So in this case, the bridge and the kids are moving. But if you look at the background, Photoshop did do what it was supposed to do. It, it locked onto those background images and said, okay, I know that, you know, I'm going to lock into those pixels and these will be the pixels for the image. Now, in this case, though, that's, you know, I'm going to have some issues because of that. I could... As a bonus tip, I could turn down my opacity of the top layer, and if I was more concerned with the placement of the kids, then I could align it myself and kind of get a better alignment of where the kids are, kind of just lowering the opacity until they kind of lock in or look better. So you can do it either way you want, whichever way works best. Photoshop took its best guess. But it was, you know, using the pixels of the buildings, whereas in this case, I might actually be better off using the pixels of the kids. So, we get them aligned, we kind of get them where we want, and again, I'm looking at the two back kids, because that's where I'm going to be doing most of my work, and we're good to go there, right about there. Alright, so now, we'll go ahead and uh, turn our opacity back up. And now that we've got both our layers stacked on top of each other and the kids are more in alignment, again, I don't care about the buildings, we now get to do a little bit of masking. And by the way, we can crop. We're going to crop, but we don't need to at this point yet. I'm just going to go ahead and add a layer mask. So I'm down here at the bottom of the layers panel, add a layer mask. And when I add that layer mask, of course, it's white, meaning reveal everything. And here's one of my favorite tricks of, of kind of compositing two photos is really just hide the bad one on top. So I'll switch to my brush tool. I'm on my brush and I'm going to paint in black. So I'll just either hit the letter D for my default colors or the letter X to swap them around. So that'll swap the black and white. So now that I'm painting in black, watch what happens. I can just start masking these two kids. 
to where I get the one on the one from underneath to be the one on top. And again, I don't have to go do the whole thing. I just have to make it look right, right? I don't have to do everything here. We just need to make sure that they're all there when we're done. So, and of course, we'll bring that building back. There we go. And we've got it. And again, just be careful. You don't start bringing in too much of the other photo. You just want the faces or whatever parts of the photo you need that will look right. And if you grab too much, you can just switch colors. Like I'm starting to bring in some of the other grass, which is lighter. I'll just switch back to white to hide that grass. And of course, I would zoom in and take more time and do a better job. But you get the idea. So we, we got the kids now all looking and smiling and, and, you know, they're looking better than they were. Now we need to get rid of mom's foot. So let's go ahead. Same thing here. We'll start painting in black to mask that foot. And again, we know that we got some other sidewalk there to contend with. That's okay. And the sidewalks aren't even a different color because the exposure changed a little bit as the person moved and took the shot. But that's okay. Oh, we're going to have to bring in this, this kid's other leg because the leg was cut off there. So that's okay. We'll just bring in the rest of the bridge there. And again, we'll just have to, oh, see, once you start, you can't stop. you got to kind of do the whole thing. So we'll bring in the other leg, get rid of this leg, and again, you're going to have to judge it. You're going to have to get it right to where it looks okay, but you get the idea. Now, if I start going too far, which right about there is good, then I would have to start bringing in the rest of her body too. So you got to keep that in mind. All right, so it's all working out. Again, don't forget any pieces. Like I almost left off the toe there. And just make sure you go over it good. Make sure you get it all. There we go. Get the rest of that leg there. Oh, and see, once I start bringing in the hands, then I'd have to do the hands. So we'll just go ahead and take those back out. Put the other hands back. So just switching colors and just being careful. Oops, just being careful about what pieces you bring in or don't bring in. So again, you're going to take your time and do a better job than what I'm doing here. Yeah, it looks like we're going to need to bring that arm in. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, it's turned into more than I expect. Oh, God, there we go. <laughs> so, you know, it just, it, you, you can get to a point of you have to decide where to stop. And actually, I'm going to stop here because... I'd start bringing in the other kid, and then I'd have to deal with the same things I'm dealing with now of, do I bring in his entire body or not? So, you decide. You get it where you want it. Oh, I want the other color. There we go. And you bring in one kid or the other. But you got to make it look right, as I'm doing here, just kind of making sure all the fingers are there, all the toes are there, so forth and so on. All right, so, and uh, we got it. So, now we've got the and just making sure we get all of the sweater here because again we don't want any transparency because i was playing around in those areas so once you get it once you get all the kids in get them all the way you want you can uh, then at this point now you can decide your crop area so i can uh here i'll just hit the letter c and this will give me a nice crop rectangle now, I could crop the guy, just simply crop the guy out, but I want to keep as much of my photo as possible. I've got another way to take care of him anyway. And we'll just go ahead and crop it down to that. Okay, so now we've got a good photo as far as we've got everybody in. Now we just need to tighten up some of these loose, loose endings here. So I'm going to go to my lasso tool, make sure I'm back on the actual layer, and we're just going to go ahead and lasso this guy who... We don't even know. All right, so now that we got him lassoed, now if I hit delete, it's just going to delete him, and we're going to leave a hole in the layer. But if I hold, because I'm on a layer, if I hit shift delete, that will bring up content aware fill. So we'll just do a content aware fill and take him right out. That's one of those great times where content aware fill works awesome. All right, so now, same thing here. We've got the name of this church, and for me, I find it a little distracting. I don't really need to see the name of this church in my family photo. 
or my friend's family photo. So we'll just do a quick little selection of that. And same thing, shift delete, content aware, and content aware fill takes that out nicely for me. Now we've got the problem down here of the of the two different exposures for the brick here or the side wall, or the uh, bridge here. So we'll just select where we can definitely see a line and shift delete, content aware fill. Let's see what that does for us. And it didn't really do a good job in this case. Let's go ahead and tighten it up. Let's reduce the amount of area that it can work with. One more time. That's getting better. And in this case, the other trick I would try, we'll do one more content aware fill if that doesn't get it. I'll go back to my old method of doing it, which is switching to the patch tool. So we're on the, actually, we want the patch tool. There we are. So with any selection with the patch tool, you can just drag it to another area. And what I want to do is just blend in that line. And it's just not doing a good job there. I think it's because of the mask. And it's probably the mask. All right, so in this case, what it's telling me is that it's you know it's not going to work because of the mask in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these layers because I still want to keep the layers in case I make a mistake and need to go back. So I'll do Command-Shift-E to put that up on its own layer. So now we can get rid of the other layers for now. We just turn them off. Now we're on this layer, and now we can go back to trying to blend this color in a little bit better here. So we can do the patch tool now. And now, see, it blends it in because it's no longer dealing with a mask. It now has collapsed that into its own layer, so it did a much better job. Let's try it now with the undo. We'll do a content aware fill to see if that will actually work any better. And no, I kind of like my other method better, so we'll just use the patch tool. So, content aware fill works when it works, and when it doesn't work, you might need to use something else. Okay, so that's it. We've got our we got our photo in, and now there's one more thing I would do. I'd go in and I would add an adjustment. Although this photo is fine as far as what she wanted, she got all four of her kids. We got her out of there. We still have all the arms, legs, and toes. <laughs> we'll just go in and do one more thing. We'll go ahead and add in actually two more things. We'll add in uh, a little of a exposure adjustment. I just want to crank up the exposure of this shot just a little bit. And we'll go back and we'll add in a little vibrance. So just to make the colors pop a little bit more, make the grass a little bit more saturated, we'll just crank up the vibrance just a hair. And there you have it. There's our finished photo. And just, again, a lot of that was experimenting, just trying to get it the way we, you know, get it right, you know, which method to use to get rid of things. But... Combining the two layers, auto-align layers will work most of the time for you. And then just mask off the parts that you, you don't want on the top photo to expose the bottom photo. So, I hope you learned something in fixing a family photo here with Photoshop CS5. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.